You know, statistically, in a civilian or a police gunfight, a reload is gonna be a very, very rare thing to happen. Meaning, like, less than 5% of the time are you ever gonna to have to do a reload in a fight. But is it an important skill to work on? Of course it is. Because if you have to do an emergency reload, which is what I just demonstrated, where the slide locks to the rear, what does that mean you were doing during that process? That means you're literally still in the middle of the fight. So the last thing you want to do is have a situation where the slide locks to the rear and now you can't perform a reload quickly because A, you don't carry spare, uh, spare ammunition. You should carry at least one magazine, if not two on your body. Or number two, you don't know how to do one very quickly. You haven't practiced it. So effectively what you have in your hand is a hammer, okay? Now let me expand on that real quick before I teach you the reload and give you some tricks. When we're reloading, if the situation has evolved to where the guy's literally right on top of me, it's okay to train the skill set in that you do in fact have a hammer. As a matter of fact, when I do a lot of my defensive practice, I'll set a target up and I'll start at two yards from the target. And I'll work offline, you know, stepping offline and drawing the handgun, do some close quarter stuff. And when the gun runs empty, what I'm trying to get my brain to realize and do under stress is literally use the handgun as a striking implement. Well, gun runs empty, slide is locked to the rear, boom, I'm, I'm punching, striking, doing whatever else, and then moving to do the reload. Because if I'm really, really close to someone, just stand there trying to reload and do all that fine manipulation, even if I'm really good at it, may be a bad choice if he's pummeling my head with a baseball bat. So think about it as an actual physical combative tool that you can utilize before you do the reload itself, okay? But since we're working on the reload, let's talk about the reload itself. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna unload the gun. We've got a clear and unloaded gun. And I wanna to talk to you just real briefly about uh, improvements of your reload. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a loaded magazine when I do this, but I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. Once again, don't forget safety, safety, safety. So when we're reloading the gun, probably the single best thing we can do to make our reloads faster and better is A, learn how to grab the magazine properly, okay? So a proper magazine grip is as follows. The base pad of the magazine is in the palm of my hand, and then my index finger is somewhere along the front of the magazine. Now don't put your finger up along the tip of the bullet like a lot of people do and or teach, because every time that happens, you're jamming your finger inside the mag well, and it hurts, and it doesn't slide off as efficiently. What I want to have is, I want to have my index finger in a position where when I go to insert the magazine in the gun, it pushes my index finger out of the way and I can get a nice clean insert. So that's a key point. Number two is to make sure we have the base pad in the palm of our hands. I see a lot of people try doing you know, reloads like this with just really improper grips. You wouldn't grip anything like this if it was important to you. You know, If this magazine was like a, a million dollar bill, well you, you grab it, you'd wrap your fingers around it. So that's how it's gonna be. Now to get the magazine into position, I like to have my bullets pointed forward. There's some other people out there that are a little bit different, but that allows me to sweep and grip with my support hand, grab the magazine, set up myself for success. Okay, so all I'm doing is grabbing the magazine right out of the mag pouch, and all I can do is take the hand and stick it right into the mag well. Which brings me to key point number two. Key point number two is learning where we need to position the gun to best receive the magazine. Now, if I try to do the reload out here, Good luck with that. It's like trying to thread a needle or open a jar out here. You're gonna be missing, you're not gonna have good dexterity, it's gonna be a very poor position. If I bring the gun way down here, the problem with this is if my gun goes down, what, am I, what do my head and eyes do? You got it, they go down. So now I can no longer see what's in front of me. I can't see the thread, I don't know where he is. I don't know if he's run up by, you know, about to chop my head off with the machete. I don't like getting my head chopped off with the machete. So I like to bring the gun nice and high, so basically it's right below my vision line, okay? Now a key index point is probably to put your elbow up next to your body, but that's not the only thing I'm looking for, is I'm looking for a spot where the magazine well, imagine if you were inside my mag well and you were looking out, how would I have to angle the mag well to see my source of ammunition? So if my mag well is pointing basically to where I carry my magazine, when the magazine comes out, that means that the magazine is, in, is going to insert very, very smoothly. And if you look at how this has happened, I'm, I'm not actually looking at the gun right now. Notice how I'm looking at you, oh, I missed it that time. But even without looking at it, notice how smoothly it goes into the mag well. If I have the angle off, 
each time I try to stick the, the magazine in there, I've got to reorient it. So I want to have it at an angle. If you look at how my gun's set up, let me let the slide go forward. It's about like this. Not like this. Not like this. It's about there. The muzzle is pretty much horizontal to the ground. And if there were a camera inside my mag well, that's going to give me my sweet spot. To figure this out, you literally don't have to have ammunition. Get dummy rounds in a magazine and literally practice this. From full extension to this. Find your sweet spot. Okay? Find your sweet spot. Find your sweet, sweet, sweet spot. Can't talk to that. Find your sweet spot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start literally practicing the sweet spot to insertion. So sweet spot to insertion, okay? Now if I'm practicing this with a slide lock to the rear, I could practice sweet spot to insertion to mag or to the slide manipulation. Sweet spot insertion, slide manipulation. Sweet spot insertion, slide manipulation. Now I use the slide lock lever. I'm not telling you to for defensive purposes. I'm going to tell you to do this or this consistently unless you have an extended slide lock. The only reason I do it on these 1911s is they're so well designed with this extended slide release. It's right there for my left thumb. And to be honest, it's a slightly faster reload for me who also competes as long as it does defensive stuff. So what I might work on is sweet spot slide. You know, sweet spot, slide. And then you could pick it up a notch where you're going sweet spot, slide, and actually letting it go forward, okay? When I do that particular portion of the drill, I'm going to do that live fire. So let me demonstrate that for you very, very quickly. Get my eyes on. And I'll show you what it looks like. And then I'll show you the full drill that we're going to do, okay? So this is just a portion of the skill building drill. This is not the full drill itself. I'll show you that next, okay? So I would work from where I grab my magazine... And of course, my fingers out of the trigger guard. I'm not shooting anymore. Bring the gun back. Sweet spot. Insertion. Let the slide go forward. Build the grip. Fire a shot. And of course, you can let one of your rounds go out on the ground. Lock it to the rear. And normally, I practice this with dummy rounds first. All I'm doing is sweet spot. Build the grip. Fire my shot. Okay, so that's how I would work my initial application of the sweet spot. Now, this is for... Once again, an emergency reload, which is one where the slide is locked to the rear. If you're working a speed reload, you can simply insert the magazine, build your grip, fire shot. Insert the magazine, build your grip, fire shot, okay? Now, the full drill requires that I pick up my empty magazine. And of course, I wanna be able to show you a couple angles. So let me get set up and I'm gonna show you that here in just a second. Okay, so now for the full live fire drill, I have an empty magazine. And of course, I have one magazine that's full of ammo. Let me show you how this one looks, okay? So I'm going to put my eyes and my ears on to do the drill itself. To set up the handgun, I still have one in the chamber, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my empty magazine. So the setup is one in the chamber, an empty magazine in the gun, and I have my fully loaded magazine here. Now I'm going to get some more repetitions of the draw process, and don't forget, as you're doing these drills, you know, we worked on grip first and then trigger and then draw. We're always working on all of these things. So even though I may be focusing on the reload, I'm still working on the other parts of that particular dynamic, okay? So I'm going to start in whatever hand position I want to. Go ahead and go through my draw process. Try to fire two shots, and of course I can't because I needed to reload. And I'm going to fire that second shot. Scan process. Work my way back to the holster. Okay, so the goal is to do a progression of four. One round, and of course slide lock to the rear, reload, fire my second round, okay? So my magazine that fell out of the gun is right here. With an empty magazine, you can very safely reach down, pop your full magazine out. I can put my empty magazine back in the gun, and I'm going to put that back on my pouch. So now I'm set up for my drill again. So now I'm doing a progression of four. The second repetition, I'm going to fire one round, and then two rounds after the reload. So it's one, and then your progression comes after the reload. Don't get too confused with the numbers though. The key point here is that you're practicing your grip, your draw, your trigger ma manipulation, and your reload all at one time, okay? So I'm gonna vary my hand start position just a little bit, draw my handgun out, fire my reload, round, two rounds afterwards. Now, I had a little bit of a snag on my garment there, and uh, when I actually sweeped it out of the way, I actually probably pulled it to the rear and caught a little bit on the bottom of my mag pouch. You're gonna have these mistakes when you're doing your training drills. You're gonna make a mistake, you're gonna accidentally grab the shirt wrong, you know, the wind is gonna be blowing, you're gonna have an issue that causes you to get caught up. Here's your goal when that happens is to never, ever, ever stop. I didn't stop for this video and there's three of you, or maybe more, watching me. The point is keep going in your training drills. If you mess up your draw process, you know, or your reload process or something like that, continually fight through it and then figure out, okay, what am I doing wrong on my sweep or my 
grip or you know my reload index what am i doing wrong that i need to improve so knowing that i'm going to start from the same position i'm going to think about doing my draw process you know smoothing out my grip there it is that was better so i thought about what i did wrong probably had a little too much tension on the jack or my garment itself you know probably pulled my shirt into my mag pouch which caused me to miss that reload the key point there is that don't stop in your training drills you know, you've got to continually fight through it. And to be honest with you, today as I'm filming this, it's hot, it's very sticky, it's very muggy. You know, my shirt is sticking to me. It's hard for me to, you know, let the garment sweep through my hands. The wind is blowing, so it's blowing this, this thin polo shirt under my body. But that's a perfect training opportunity. I mean, it's something where, duh, no brainer. This is the best time to train because it gives me those small environmental challenges that force me to work through the position. Okay? I mean, I even got a little boo-boo on my hand, a little blood coming off my finger where I caught it on the edge of my magazine earlier. No big deal, I'm gonna train through that because remember, if you're in the Walmart parking lot and then you get into a fight and God forbid have fired so many rounds where you've gotta do a reload, things are already pretty bad. So the harder you train, the harder the environment is, the more challenging it is, the better off you're gonna be in the real fight. So take these challenges as a blessing, get out there in the range and practice your reloads.